In this video, I want to look at defining ratios from what's known as the multiple batches perspective. So what does it mean for two quantities to be in a specific ratio? Well, let's suppose we have a mixture. This mixture consists of three cups of grape juice and five cups of peach juice. So the question we want to know is what other amounts of grape and peach juice will make a mixture of the same flavor and color? Well, we can think of the original mixture as one batch. So here I have my mixture. I have three cups grape and five cups of peach juice. Like I said, this is one batch. And I want to make several copies of that batch and then combine them. Because if I do that, that combination will have the same flavor and color as the original. So here I made four batches, and if I combine all of them, like I said, it'll have the same flavor and color as the original. I could have also done something like take half of the original mixture, some other proportion, and then we'll still have the same flavor and color as the original. So the way we can think about this, all mixtures made from n times three cups of grape juice and n times five cups of peach juice, where n is any positive number of batches, will have the same flavor and color. So we can think of the specific flavor and color of all of these mixtures as encoded by a single pair of numbers, three and five, or three to five. So in general, from the multiple batches perspective, Let's suppose we have A units of one quantity and B units of another quantity where A and B are positive numbers. Then I consider them together as one batch or one unit, where a unit's formed from two or more things, since we do have a mixture of two here, but it's like one complete batch. And then we have a ratio A to B. If we have n times a units of the first quantity and n times b units of the second quantity for n batches, where n is a positive number. So when we do this, we're using our definition of multiplication so that n is a number of groups and a and b are the number of units per group. So we have the number of batches, that's the number of groups, and this is the number of units we need in each group. Same thing down here. So the idea of the multiple batches perspective is we think of one batch as fixed, and then we vary the number of batches to get the quantities in the same ratio. So as we talked about before, if we can go five meters in two seconds, then we can think of this as essentially one batch. Then we could go three times 15 meters in three times two seconds. That would be a total of three batches. In addition, we could do one half times five meters in one half times two seconds to figure out how far it would take us or how long it would take us to travel 2.5 uh, meters. This would be a half batch. We can continue this idea. Let's go back to our example of mixing three cups of grape juice and five cups of peach juice. So when we view a ratio from the multiple batches perspective, we often display the values that are in the ratio in what's known as a ratio table or what's known as a double number line. So let's start by looking at the ratio table. In our table, we would have the number of batches we're making, the number of cups of grape juice we need, the number of cups of peach juice we need. So for one batch, we know we need three cups of grape juice and five cups of peach. Two batches, two times three cups of grape juice, two times five cups of peach. Three batches, three times three cups of grape juice, three times five cups of peach. We can continue this in general n batches. Three times n number of grape juice, five n cups of peach. Double number lines are very similar to tables, except that they show relative sizes of quantities and tables don't need to be organized by size. Here's my double number line. We have zero is where we start. I'm gonna let the top line be grape, the bottom be peach. We know that three cups of grape correspond to five cups of peach. 
And now we need to space things evenly. If here to here is three, then here to here is another three, which makes this six, this one nine, and this one 12. Down at the bottom from here to here is five. So this would be another five to get 10, 15, and 20. So we can see the same ratios we see in our table.